Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. And we're glad you're here with us this morning. Uh, I'm looking for my myself here on our gallery. But I don't see myself. Well, there I am. Okay, good morning and happy Easter to all of you. Happy Easter to folks on Facebook. We're glad you're here. Welcome to St. James' second Easter service. We had a beautiful Easter vigil last night at the church. And uh, so this is our second service celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Uh, as I said, we're on Facebook Live, so um, that's terrific. I'll remind you that you can sing along because uh, you will all be muted during the singing of our hymns today, but Maddie is our song leader, and so you can sing along as a duet uh, with Maddie. So that will be wonderful. I don't think there are any other liturgical notes today, so we'll begin with the prelude. Opening him is Jesus Christ is risen today.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. 
let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today are portions of Psalm 118 that you see there on your screen. We will say the psalm together. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. 
and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Sometimes we're surprised at how an ending turns out. Many years ago in Washington, DC, I had the opportunity to go to a play at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. I was ecstatic to be able to attend the famous Kennedy Center, thinking that the participants of the conference and I would be seated in the famous opera hall where the Kennedy Center honors are held, as well as the Washington National Opera. Well, it turns out that the Kennedy Center has three main venues and at least five other venues. And we weren't seeing the play in the opera hall. But the play we were attending was called Sheer Madness, S-H-E-A-R. Without knowing ahead of time, it turns out that the play is an interactive whodunit play. It is one of the longest running non-musical plays in the world. On January 29th, 2020, the Boston cast celebrated its 40th anniversary where it had performed 12,580 times this play. And the Kennedy performances are in their 33rd year and between Boston and Washington DC, Sheer Madness has been the longest running play uh, non-musical play in American history. And as I mentioned, it's produced all over the world. Anyway, the play is an interactive mystery. The play is set in a unisex hair salon in whatever city it's playing in that day. And the characters, the landlady, Isabel Cizerni, lives who lives above the shop, is murdered. And the other characters, and this is their description, include a flamboyant hairdresser and their flirty yet disty, ditzy assistant, along with a prim and proper uptight older lady and an older man who is a used antique dealer. Think about that, used antique. Dealer. Well, a lot of the dialogue is improvised by the actors, and the humor tends to revolve around references to current events, either in the nation or in that city. It gets a little uh, full of India innuendo at times, so it's sometimes for adults only. But the audience gets involved in the action by questioning the actors and attempting to solve the crime of who murdered Isabel Cizerni. The audience turns into a combination of sleuth and jury, using their observations of each character's behavior to interrogate the actors slash suspects. For instance, the audience might ask, 
what was in the briefcase or what happened to your apron or can we see if his finger is really cut? Sometimes you're surprised at how the play ends because in the end, the audience collectively votes on who done it. The ending of the play is different every night, not only because the audience frequently votes on a different character as the murderer, but also because whoever is voted as the murderer improvises the rest of their dialogue, as well as the other characters improvising the rest of their dialogue. So eventually everyone reveals themselves and their part in the murder. At the performance I attended, I had no clue of who the murderer was till the end. Sometimes we are surprised by the ending. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome have waited until the Sabbath was over to anoint Jesus's body. They were three of the women were told who used to follow him and provided for him in Galilee. And we're told that there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. Surely these women had spent the Sabbath grieving as they had witnessed Jesus' crucifixion. They had witnessed one of the most humiliating, gruesome, slow, painful, public deaths ever conceived. Crucifixion is also where we get the word excruciating. That's what that death was. And the women who watched it were surely traumatized. The man whom they had loved and who had loved them, who had shown them divine love, he was destroyed. Not only were the women traumatized and grieving, grieving, but also wondering how could they get the stone across the entrance to the tomb rolled away? How would they get to Jesus's body? As they arrive, imagine their suspicion when they see that the stone has already been rolled away. Imagine the backlight that makes the tomb look even darker. They carefully enter the dark tomb and inside is a man, a young man in a white robe sitting on the shelf of the tomb. Imagine the shock. The young man spoke to them, do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Go, he says, tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Well, what did the women do? They booked it out of there. They flew out of there. In panic and amazement, they left. And we're told they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. And that's the end. That's the end of the Gospel of Mark. Surprised? That can't possibly be the end, can it? 
maybe we should vote. Well, of course it's not the end. The women were amazed and they were changed. Could it be that divine love, holy love was stronger than death? In the end, they told someone. Paul writes that Cephas, Peter, saw Jesus along with the other disciples, then to hundreds others, then to James, then to all the apostles, and then to him, Paul. Paul saw Jesus, and we know after his encounter with Jesus, he devoted his life and his death to the gospel. And so have countless others through the centuries. They've all been changed. For you and I, it seems like we have two paths by which we have come to this place today. Like Paul and so many other Christians, some of us have had a direct encounter with the risen Christ. Or someone has told us what was told to them, what was told to them, all the way back to the empty tomb, to the women who must have told someone, who told someone, and on and on, and here we are today. We are here because the one who loves us completely and eternally has overcome death and evil and sin. So there are two paths by which we have come here, but in front of us, also lie many paths by which we, may, we make decisions about our lives. One by one, forks in the road appear before us. Sometimes we choose this instead of that. Sometimes we choose that instead of this. And we move down the road of our life and each path, each decision we make creates the story of our lives and the story by which we have been, will be, and are. Stories of God's presence with us and that unconditional love which has touched us in grand, amazing ways or comes to us in small, almost imperceptible ways. However it comes to us, we become conveyors of the good news. You may remember these past five or six weeks, we have been talking about our baptismal promises. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you continue in resisting, e resisting evil? And when you fall into sin, will you repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I always, will you strive for justice and peace? and respect the dignity of every human being. Will you seek and serve Christ, loving your neighbor as yourselves? Dear friends, those, those promises make up the story of our lives. Tell the story of your life. Let the telling 
of the story of your life, your story, surprise us. Let us hear your amazing good news, no matter how big or how small. Let us know how you have been changed because then we can be changed as well. And we can be changed because Christ is risen. Love has prevailed. Life conquers death. Christ is raised. Alleluia and amen. It's the tradition of the church on Easter Sunday or on the Easter vigil to baptize people who have been prepared for their baptism. Back in the days of the early church, people would prepare for up to three years to be baptized on Easter. But since we don't have any baptisms to celebrate this day, we do renew our baptismal vows. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, believe in, God, in God the Father. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us pray to Jesus Christ, whoever lives. Savior of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence, and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. We pray to you, 
Lord Christ. Lord of the church, empowered by your spirit, all Christian people, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, and this congregation, and the work of the church in every land. Give us grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in word and deed. We pray to you, Lord Christ. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve our communities and those on whom we depend for our daily needs. Grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of these places. We pray to you, Lord Christ. Great physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness, and peace to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. We pray to you, Lord Christ. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. We pray to you, Lord Christ. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. And I invite your sessions either aloud by unmuting yourself or in silence. We pray for those who have been victims of the pandemic and we give thanks for the vaccines that are now available. I give thanks for the healing of Karen, Jim, and Angie. We pray for Deb as she undergoes surgery on Tuesday. We sum up all our prayers and thanksgivings by praying that which our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, good morning again to all of you. You can see on your screen uh, the reminder about um, your pledges and contributions, and your thanksgivings of your time and talent and treasure are welcome by the congregation. And especially I want to make sure that those who have helped to create this service are thanked. And I fear that I will miss somebody, but I want to thank Alice for the music that we are hearing and are about to hear, for uh, John Oberg and Emily Hewitt and Wendy um, Arnson, who are behind the scenes, even though you see their names up there, who help us to create this service uh, by Zoom and Facebook, for Julie Lowry, who has created the uh, slideshow that you're all going to see in a few minutes. And for those who assisted us last night in having the Easter vigil, um, especially Margaret and um, Jackie Schock 
and all those who helped to uh, make our outdoor service a beautiful one. And as I said, I'm probably forgotten somebody, but I hope not. Um, I don't have any other announcements for today, except to remind people uh, to stay on after the postlude because we, we do have, um, I, I guess you shouldn't call it a slideshow now that it's on Zoom. Maybe it's a Zoom show, but of the photographs that you have all sent in uh, that are remembrances of Easter or signs of the resurrection. Does anybody else, I'm gonna look real quick. Does anybody else have any announcements? Okay, I don't see any. So the St. James Virtual Choir has been busy and their offertory anthem is, oh, sons and daughters, let us sing. Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 
Our closing hymn is Good Christians Rejoice and Sing. Go forth now into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
Julie, do you need a minute or so to get the um, slideshow ready? Yes. Yeah, everybody hang in there for a second while I do this. Okay. I would like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for the beautiful Easter flowers you sent home with Shannon last yesterday. They're so cheerful and your congregation has supported us so beautifully in our tough time lately. Thanks a lot. Well, Chris, we're glad to do that. And Shannon is one of our beloved and uh, our prayers have been with you and her um, in this difficult time.
Nice job, Julie. Very nice. That was perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. That was perfect. You all are great when you send in photographs. It's so fun to see what everybody sends in. And where is Barnaby? Where's Coco and Oliver? There they are. Yay, good job. Yeah, thanks for playing the chimes on the anthem. Yeah. And somebody has bunny ears there. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. I, I, got the, I just got these from the Easter Bunny. Oh. Sweet. We, just and found it our we found our baskets. Or, so we found our baskets around eight, and then we, um, the Easter Bunny hid our egg, hid eggs for Oliver and I around the yard. We each got Aww. our own one. Sweet. And did you say the Easter Bunny brought the ears? Yeah, he gave me them. Does that mean the Easter Bunny doesn't have any ears now? <laughs> no, I think he has some spare. He has spare ears. Look at those flowers are, on them. Those are beautiful ears. Uh -huh. I like them. They go with Luis's hat. That's right. <laughs> is Louise still here? I don't see hmm? her. There she is. Yes. The yeah. Easter Bunny brought Louise a hat. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. Hi, Here's our, here's our new Oh. So, who, who's got anything special going on tonight or today besides that Jesus has risen from the dead? <laughs> we're having uh well one at a time we got to have hands raised so who started to say something uh -oh. okay louise we're having uh easter dinner with andrew and lisa here and a facetime with Stephen, andrew's twin all this afternoon so that's a first in more than a year yeah and what's for dinner um what do you call them? The lamb, um, little chops on ribs. I can't okay. remember. Oh, rack of lamb. Oh, rack of lamb from Lori's uh, Simply Scrumptious Catering. Nice. We had them delivered yesterday, and I'll warm them up. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Lori, you might be our furthest, uh, fur a member furthest away, but you're having company today. And you have to get off mute. <laughs> oh, where did she go? She's there. She's oh, there, there you are. These newfangled machines. You're still on mute. Yeah. On mute. Okay. There you go. There. All right. Yeah, my, my brother from South Carolina is coming up and his wife and then tomorrow my nephew and his girlfriend are, are coming. So I'll have a full house. Sweet. And they'll be here till Wednesday. So I'm really excited about that. And I just had a visit from a friend in Dexter, um, Karen Walworth, who's been faithful. She's been here about five times now. All right. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you'll have a neighbor soon. A neighbor? Well, you said she'd been there five times. Oh, yeah. She just left last Monday. Okay. And what's for dinner with your company? Uh, well, tomorrow we're going to have a Greek pizza because everybody seems to be vegetarian except me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to see you, Lori. Thank you. It's good to see everybody. Yeah. 
Carol, I think the Florida couple are farther away than Lori. Oh, they <laughs> might be. We might have to do some mileage checks, but I think you're right. Yeah. So Aaron and Deb, what's going on today? We're gonna have um, a small dinner um, with a couple of our best friends down at our new place. But, but, but what's for dinner? We're gonna have, well, we're going to have turkey mostly and a little bit of ham. Okay. No seafood. And seafood. Okay. That's the other six days of the week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jackie Shock's photo might be from the furthest away. Is that right? The sunrise over Key West? Right. Yeah. Uh, we're on mile marker 10 of the uh, Keys. So it's almost to Key West. So yeah. Hey. Yeah. I would, I would we have don't known see that Jackie... the sunsets that Key West is famed for, but we get some beautiful sunrises and the yeah. So and that's what I'm awake for. I was gonna say, and you would be the one for a sunrise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's great. Oh. And Jane Hewitt has a birthday tomorrow. Yay. Yay. Happy birthday. Yay. Happy birthday. There you, whoops. Oh, she was unmuted and now muted. Yeah. Still muted. There you go. I don't touch the last one, can I guess, because 96. There, you <laughs> guys here? Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> She didn't. She didn't do it. I did it. No. <laughs> so what's what's for dinner tonight at the Hewitt home or for birthday celebration? Um, ham, au gratin potatoes, and a birthday cake. Broccoli, spice cake. Spice cake. Yep. All right. All right. Jane, how old are you going to be? I can't. I'm sorry. Nine. How old are you going how to be? How old are you going to be, Mom? 96. 96. Well, Six. just four out of a hundred. <laughs> You'll get there. <laughs> Well, we hope you have a happy birthday tomorrow. Well, thank you. And I would just like to say that I appreciate all the people at St. James Church uh, right from the very beginning when we first started attending. And for me, the highlight is singing in the choir every Sunday. Um, there's some abbreviation that during the summer months, but I guess everybody has to take a vacation sometime. So, but it's great to see people who have either moved away or what. Now, um, you might be running out of um, time. I may be running out of time, but here I better tell you thanks and goodbye for today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jane. Quick comment from the pun. Yes, um, pun. I want to say thank you so much to Alice and to Emily for their patience and their encouragement in helping the children participate in the music for today. And I want to say thank you to Jane because we spent some hours talking while we were waiting for all of the recording to be done, and it was so delightful. I'm happy uh, well, it's good to see you all, and we appreciate you and the kids and even Barnaby. So <laughs> Barnaby. Yeah, maybe keep him around. <laughs> Thank you. How, how's your puppy? Yes. How is uh it's not fur ball. What is it? Nimbus. Nimbus, yeah, like the cloud. He's right there. He's fine. He's coming along with potty training. He's got a good disposition. Okay. So uh, Ten weeks old. He's gonna be a big one. Some of you may have seen on Facebook that my dog ate 
half or all of my chocolate for Easter yeah. yesterday yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Seize candy. Oh, no, it wasn't yeah. just Hershey's. Uh, <laughs> is he okay? Oh yeah, she's fine. So far, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm despondent. <laughs> Get you some more candy. All right, who's got a radio on? <laughs> Ellen. I do. Ellen, how are you? I'm sorry. Okay, so I got to tell you about my Easter dinner. Ooh, Go for Bobby it. Bobby brought me. Well, Poppy woke up in the night and she barked and barked and barked and barked and barked. And this morning she went out and she came back and she had a half a chicken in her mouth. Oh, my. Oh, my. I think, yes. I think the only people that raise chickens are across the street. My guess is a hawk got one of the chickens and maybe dropped it on his way over and she found it and the chicken leg and the claw were hanging out of her mouth when she oh. came in. <laughs> uh, so I did, uh, we had a tug of war and I finally won. But you know, it's kind of a uh, not so good looking piece. So maybe we're not gonna eat that for Easter. <laughs> yeah, good chicken idea. claws don't taste very good. No, not at all. What do you have going for Easter? Are you having a feast of some sort? Me? No. Yeah. No, just Ellen and the dogs. All right. Well, uh, Poppy, um, hopefully you'll feed her. <laughs> She's going to have a chicken. Yeah, but it won't be a it won't be a chicken. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fine. Did you get a picture of it? Oh, you know what? I did not. Oh, you know what? I did not. All right. Well, was... next time. Uh, uh, no, no more. That's enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Marion, what are you doing today for Easter? Bye on now. <laughs> you don't know? You might, yes. Uh, our children will be here and they're wise and together. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're having that and we're having beef wellington and baked Alaska. Oh, wow. very nice. We have some chefs here. Very nice. <laughs> hey. Yeah. What are the cooks cooking? That's the the cooks aren't cooking. They're driving to Chicago soon. And we're going to stay the week with my niece and nephew and care for my great niece and nephew, uh, a 10 year old little girl, uh, Emma, and a seven year old boy, Henry, and they'll keep us very busy. And I'm going to teach my great niece how to make sourdough bread. So I've packed up my starter that I got from Paul Curtis and all the, uh, the things you need. She's into baking. And we got our second shots this past week, and we're really looking forward to, yeah, getting out of Dodge. Good. All right. Well, travel carefully. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes. Um, Shannon, there you are. Saw you last night and this morning. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing okay. Um, Mom and I are leaning on each other while we, you know, don't have the third member of our household. So we just, instead of it being a tripod, it's a ladder. Okay. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going to be going um, over to my sister-in-law's in Westland, where we always, generally always go for holidays. And see all the little munchkins who we haven't seen for over a year. Because oh we're vaccinated. Goodness. Because what? We're vaccinated. We're vaccinated. Yes, we're vaccinated. Okay. Uh, let's see. Pete Scoberg. I see your photo there. But maybe he's out at the grill. No. Oh. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. 
uh, a <laughs> little later today. Be rack of lamb and uh, potatoes and Brussels sprouts, I think, what's on the menu. All right, yeah, that sounds good. good. And uh, we'll be celebrating with a dear friend, so. Um, Wonderful. Blessed Easter to all of you. And to you and Norma, Pete. <laughs> Margaret, Margaret. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask Janet Cook a question. That sure. picture of you with the uh, bust that said new creation, was that your work? Yes, I had an opportunity to attend a, um, a sculpture retreat with some friends a few years ago out in the, like the horse country and uh, where is that? Um, a far northern suburb of Detroit out in the woods and it was um, just an incredible weekend and we got to create, you know, whatever we wanted. So that that will sit out in the garden in, uh, as soon as the weather warms up a little bit. It was very impressive. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I thought it was from the art fair in Grand Rapids several years ago but that uh, was a writing piece wasn't it that you had to yes. been able yeah. to put in the art fair yeah um mm -hmm. beth yakel we saw you yesterday ah, and i came delightful. back for today too and you came back for today <laughs> that's great yeah how are things with you oh good good i'm grilling outside tonight too so oh, wonderful <laughs> What's on the menu? Um, steak, and I'm taking a, from Pete Brussels sprouts and uh -huh. stuff like that. So yeah, and the Easter Bunny will be on my uh, on my street in a little bit. If anybody wants Ooh. to do drive by, the Easter Bunny is accepting drive by waves, but no <laughs> getting out of the car. So <laughs> how fun! <laughs> So I hope everybody has a happy Easter. <laughs> yes, I, I want you to all know the reason I'm asking what's for dinner is because I'm trying to figure out whose house I'm going to later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jackie, did I check with you? You're muted. Uh, yes, in the wisdom of my children, I'm not doing any cooking today. Uh, we're having sandwiches over at uh, my son's house. Something very kid friendly. So sure. sandwiches and fruit. Nice. Yeah. Nice. My sister and her husband used to come home from church. He was a pastor too, and they'd just always have chicken salad sandwiches. So that sounds good. Something simple. Doesn't that sound good? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Ask Ellen. My house. That's right. You, come, you can come to my house and have Ellen, a, you've, you've uh, got some mayonnaise and chicken. celery. Sure. Yep. I'll mix it up with that chicken leg. Okay. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait. Just take off the feathers first, Ellen. Yeah, really. Take, take off the skin. Yeah. Alice, how are you? Doing okay. I'm going to do a Zoom with my uh, two children and their babies that we're all in the slideshow in case you had noticed. <laughs> yes, we noticed. <laughs> oh, they're then, cute. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so, and then, go ahead. And then I'm going to have dinner with a friend later today. So be a nice day. Nice. I'd like to thank the choir again for their diligence through all this time and, and putting on anthems. It's just, it's really been a lot of work, but uh, they've really stuck with it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Did a good yeah. job. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see John Oberg. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we there go. Is. Takes a while to get the mouse to go where I want it to go. Everything's just hunky dory here. I have to make pancakes for Emily because she's going back to her house in Ann Arbor in a bit. So. She, she's anxious to get back to see her friends, but she, she came here because her roommate was going out of state. And so she and her roommate would have to be quarantined. So she came here and then she had to stay longer because Peter had COVID. 
Oh. But Peter, he didn't have COVID. He tested positive. He felt fine the whole time. Um, but he's off the quarantine thing, so he sprung the coop. He went to see a friend in Detroit, but he should be back this afternoon. And so we, we will have uh, jambon roti avec mille, honey baked ham. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and uh, pomme de terre gratiné avec fromage. Mm. Cheesy, cheesy baked potatoes. And that, that's what we'll have for dinner. So, English, English. Yeah. Well, well, I'm having Meyer ham. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know how you say that in French. I have to tell you, it was, you know, I, it's one of those things that you just kind of like bite the bullet and say, you know, this is an extravagance, but heck, Joyce wants it. You know, her mom would buy eight slices of honey baked ham. So, what the heck? Well, there you go, there, and you stand in line. And you could go in and da da da, and so you don't have that. And so it's fifty something dollars, like fifty four dollars, which is a lot of money, but it's no more than you know you spend for some other things. And I was in this in Myers this morning buying dog food, and I <laughs> couldn't help looking over my shoulder at their hams as for the same chunk of pork. It was seven ninety five. So oh. I could have bought that and got some honey. <laughs> It wouldn't uh, have been the same. No, nah, <laughs> no, nah, you wouldn't get the uh, orange tinfoil. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm going to save the, the I'm going to save the orange tinfoil for next year. I got the seven dollar. I said, "Look, honey, another honey baked ham." <laughs> <laughs> mine came with blue tinfoil. Hmm? Mine came with blue tinfoil. No. Just so. Not the same. No. Um, who else is there? Wendy. It went perfectly this morning. Yeah. And what are you and Len up to today? Um, probably not a whole lot. We're just going to be bums. All yeah. right. Bum. Is anybody cooking? <laughs> he cooked yesterday, so I don't know if we'll cook today or if we'll just have pizza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the kids, Denise is working and... Um, that Amanda and Matt were going to his folks and so it's like Greg's Greg's sleeping right now but he's also working this weekend so it's just us and the dogs yeah. all right <laughs> all right well that sounds actually pleasant too to just be bums um who else is on the call uh Wash are you there it looks like you're unmuted yep Ham and asparagus. All right. Coleslaw. <laughs> then I'm going to try an angel food cake without the angel food pan. So is it really angel food cake then? And a, a strawberry whip. I'm going to try a walk in the woods. And then go Stanford and the women's basketball championship. Mm. So oh, okay. my team and enjoy the spring uh, weather. And then mm -hmm. I got to go back to work tomorrow, cutting wood. So, <laughs> did, hello, everyone. Did anyone see, I guess there was a basketball game at, on last night that was something with the last shot. Was Yep. Gonzaga took the last shot from almost half court and overtime. And so, but who cares about that game? It's go Stanford. <laughs> so. All right. And Julie Lowry. So we don't have any exciting plans for today. We'll just take it easy. I might dare to set up the outdoor furniture on our deck. Um, yeah, it's, I just want it to be, I don't want it to freeze anymore in the evening just because if it rains and the water gets in the tile on one of the tables, it could damage it. So I don't know if, if I'm being too optimistic to think we're not going to have any more below freezing evenings. Hard to know. Yeah. Hard to know. I have a little, I, I have a little planter that's already got, it's got pansies and some other delicate flower in it. And <laughs> I go to this was about a week ago, I go to purchase it and, you know, all the other ones are in bloom. They look beautiful. And uh, as I'm paying for it, the woman says, 
Now, make sure that you don't have it outside until it's consistently 50 degrees day and night. And so this little planter that I got to sit outside hasn't been outside yet. So um, I think it snowed on an April 15th one day. So I was year. too optimistic and put out pansies and they got completely frozen. Really? <laughs> was sad. Pansies are supposed to be able to take it. I know, yeah. but in fact, they are pansies. Yes. <laughs> Did any of you see Melissa's Caesar salad the other day? It was on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It was March 15th, right? The Ides of March. And <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Well, you said I'm. I feel like just having a wedge of lettuce. <laughs> well, it was it was a deadpan. It was. Um, do you guys have thoughts about dinner? I'm thinking about um, having a wedge of of lettuce and just stabbing it 23 times. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got all these dinner suggestions, and then a lot of people were laughing. So it, it worked took, both ways. It took me a minute <laughs> to figure it out. You too, yes. for sure. Hmm? Oh, Melissa. Yeah, she's going to be our stand-up comedian when we back when we get back to church and can have talent shows. And thank you, everybody, for your sympathy cards. You guys have all been writing me stuff, and that was very kind. Well, you're welcome, Shannon. All I right. Any pancakes? Okay. Bye. Margaret, we haven't heard from you. Oh, Margaret. Yeah. Oh, I thought we had. Yeah. I can ask Jan at her question, the question about her sculpture. Oh, yeah. I'm what going you... to my friend Lynn's for dinner. We're having ham. And okay. uh, I don't know what else. Ham and, and I'm taking those. And if anybody saw on my Facebook page, those little bunny pots with the yeah. Yes. Them, I bought three of those, one for each of the families in that family. So really nice. nice. So cute. I'm sorry I missed you there, Margaret. That's okay. It's Jane. There's Jane. Yep. Bye. All right. Goodbye, Shannon. Happy Easter. Bye, Alice. Happy Easter. You happy Thank Easter. you, Carol. You're welcome. All right. Um, it looks like it looks like goodbye, Pungs. Bye. Looks like we're everybody's leaving coffee hour. So <laughs> that's good. Hugs to Mama Jane. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's do our little uh, uh, Wendy. Everything was perfect. Good. Did okay. you think? Yeah. Yeah. I. I guess I wasn't. I thought I was loud enough when I came on for the um, response, but I guess yeah. I must not have been. It so wasn't very loud. Okay. So that's okay. All right. It's worth a try. So, Emily, any, any, I thought everything uh, went great. Emily? Yeah. Yeah. It was all good. No, the music, went well, our, our bandwidth was stinking, but, but I was checking with other people and it sounded fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It did. It, the music was really good. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, yeah. I thought in the, the, um, Music and video came across well for the slideshow. Yep. Yes. So it did. that went really it did. well too. Uh, I Julie. saw a whole bunch of smiles when Morning is Broken started mm -hmm. um, on the grid. A whole bunch of people started smiling. That was kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. You have well, a good Easter. Yep. All of you too. You bet. Yep. Happy Easter. Enjoy the sun. Yes. Is the yeah. sun up? Beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's. Should be kind of nice out there. Okay. So, all right. See have you, a, Wendy. Have Thank a good you so week. much. Okay. okay. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye bye. Bye. No, no sermon critique, Julie. No, it was very good. Uh huh. <laughs> You're being kind on Easter no, Sunday. No, <laughs> no. I, I thought it was very clever. I liked it. All right. Good. All right. Well, you all have a great day. All right. You I'm too. Go cool. walk the trails and. You know, bye. What are you going to do, Carol? Mom says happy Easter, everybody. Tell mom happy Easter from us.
Um, I'm probably going to walk the trails and then I've got this ham from uh, Myers and um, we've got some broccoli sitting around or whatever. So, and Coco doesn't get anything because she ate all the chocolate yesterday. So, um, you know, I thought chocolate was bad for dogs. It is. So, but, you know, I just had to watch her carefully. Yeah. yeah. Although you don't have to watch too much because if they get sick, I think they're throwing up. So it's sort of obvious that there's a problem, but she was yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the good, great thing about dogs. If they know, if something disagrees with them, they just get rid of it. <laughs> Anywhere. And, and then they, and then oftentimes then they re-eat it, which is quite lovely. Isn't that <laughs> You know, they're like, well, maybe it wasn't that bad, right? You know? <laughs> right, right. And it, 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 it's helpful Crazy. for cleaning it up, you know. Yeah. So they, they clean up their own messes, which is, oh, <laughs> which is very handy. Sure. <laughs> what, now this is gross too, but since you're starting to be gross, what uh, Mia and, and Coco do though, is that they drink a whole bunch of water first and then do the thing. And so not only do you have, you know, the clumps, but then you have water, sp well, spreading all over the Regurgitated place. Regurgitated so. water, it's quite lovely. Yeah, that's lovely also. They're yeah. disgusting creatures, but we love them. That's true. <laughs> all right. Well, your um, hearts are bigger than mine. <laughs> um, have a great day. Uh, you too. I, I'm gonna try and be out of touch tomorrow and Tuesday okay. and we'll see how the rest of the week goes. How that goes. Okay. All right. And I have so, one anthem right. left for the year for the year here, you know, for the season. So right. Okay. Uh, the end is in sight. Yeah. John's doing all the week stuff. Wow. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Then I'm gonna sleep for a week. Okay. <laughs> all right, people. Have a good one. All right. See you later. Bye. Happy Bye -bye. Easter. Bye-bye.